Is fasting an age-old, outdated religious practice which does not pertain to today's society? Or is there a way that we could reconstruct our aspects, or angle if you will, to help today's people reach their full religious or spiritual experience as they fast? I believe in order to get the full benefit from fasting, we must adjust our guidelines to suit our own individual lifestyles. I'm going to present some interesting facts of the effects fasting has on the body. In today's speech, I urge you to look at all the facts I present and judge for yourself if you feel that the practice of fasting would help would help better free the mind and, and some of the weight and take some of the weight off of our shoulders. I also want to ask yourself if you believe God intended fasting to only deprive us from food. Fasting is mentioned on numerous occasions in the Bible. God considers fasting important, and his words contains over 92 passages mentioning it. Many of our heroes of the faith, including Moses, Esther, Paul, and Jesus, fasted, fasted at uh, critical points in the Bible. Most of the time fasting is mentioning in the word of God, it is referring to fasting from food. A few examples would be uh, Psalms 109.24, which says, My knees are weak through fasting, and my flesh is feeble from lack of fatness. Another good one referring to food is Matthew 4.2, which says, What has forty days and forty nights afterwards he was hungry? This is a passage when Jesus was fasting in the wilderness. Could God also be referring to fasting from any distractions or harmful habits or pleasures that we may indulge that may interfere with our time spent in meditation or prayer? I think that there's also a few passages in the Bible that um, that talks about fasting not necessarily from food, but just from wicked ways. One would be Chronicles 7.14, which says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear them from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Another one would also be Matthew 4.2, which says, Then I, then I proclaim to fast there at the river of Ava, that we might humble ourselves before God to seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and all of our possessions. Why do you think fasting is beneficial in achieving spiritual enlightenment? The first reason we fast is to demonstrate humility before the sole creator of the universe. We feel God responds when we diligently and wholeheartedly seek him. The second reason we fast is to respond to God's love towards us. It's as if we are saying, because you are righteous and holy and loved us enough to send Jesus to die for us, then I'm going to sacrifice something for you. Fasting also rids our mind and soul of being preoccupied by the things of this world we think are important to us. So that we could better use that time to serve God. With that being said, then why is fasting from food the main area people will think of when they refer to fasting? Is it because food was the main source of entertainment and celebration in biblical times? Is it because food was so scarce and harvesting took so much time and energy? I believe that ridding our mind of the things that of this world we focus our minds on has evolved far beyond food. The main reason being, I get the majority of my meals to the drive through window, and I scarf them down in afternoon traffic. If I do sit down for a meal, the majority of the time I have the laptop by my side as I'm working on business for the next day. I hardly think giving this up is going to free up any of my time for meditation towards my spirituality. If I really want to to get my if you really want to get my attention, then take me away from the Sunday afternoon football games. Honestly, I spend much more of my time thinking about hunting and fishing rather than God. The best example of what preoccupies most people in this generation is the television. Therefore, if we replaced any of our time with these activities and replaced it with prayer, 
then we would not only show humility, but respect for spirituality. The last and I think the most important reason I would think fasting from food is not the only thing God is referring to is that my daughter is a type 1 diabetic. In no shape, form, or fashion is she able to fast. I realize that most believers think God spiritually nourishes the body during a fast. But in all honesty, the body goes through some serious and harmful changes during a fast, even for the healthiest person. It could cause coldness, bad breath, heightened body odor, changes in elimination such as constipation, diarrhea, lightheadedness. It could also cause changes in sleep and dreaming patterns, aches and pains, back pains, which, which could be called from dehydration. Dizziness may be called in sudden changes in position, such as rising suddenly from a chair. Headaches or stomach aches may be a result from lack of salt, sugar, or caffeine. So the body really does go through some serious changes. Also, when the body is denied glucose for only four to eight hours, the body will turn to the liver for glycogen, so it can fuel the brain. Glucose is the body's, body's primary fuel source and is essential for the brain's function. So really, if the brain is not functioning normally, then how, how are we able to focus on anything, much less our spirituality? So, in my opinion, I think that this contradicts scripture from Corinthians 6.19, which states, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you. So if, if we fast from food and our body goes through all these changes, are we really treating our body as a holy temple? So after hearing the facts and opinions I presented today, I hope I at least open your eyes to the topic of fasting. Even if you are not a believer in a higher God, I believe the activities we preoccupy our day with could be better spent for our inner wellness or even mankind for that matter. I'll also ask you, is it okay for us to alter the, our views of scripture in regards to fasting and change it to where it suits today's day and time better? If I did anything in today's speech, I would like for you to be, I would like for you to examine your day-to-day -day routine and see if there are any areas of your life to which you could replace with your accepted view of fasting.